Do we notice any gross abduction or any instability in that hip as she goes into that pattern? And then finally, we want to take a look at the, the torso and see how that mirrors her shin angle. So for all intents and purposes, whenever we're doing a squat, split squat, step up, lunge, what have you, we generally want to see a paralleled angle between the torso and the shin angle. And this is just going to help with that total body continuity and keeping everything in a good mechanical relationship. So as Kai is performing these here, nothing is really sticking out dramatically here. These look pretty good. This is a familiar movement from her. She's doing a great job controlling the foot, not letting her, her big toe get pulled out of position and, and over supinate as she's going into that, whoa, right on cue, as she's going into that curtsy pattern. And then also to just making note of her hand position, which for her was actually pretty instinctual to just kind of create some tension through the arms. And that's a really great point for this fascial line concept where we are always thinking about every aspect of the body and how it facilitates the movement. So even though we're not holding anything or doing anything particular to the upper body, counterbalancing through the arms and then creating tension through the hands is going to help us to get continuity through those myofascial lines. Do we notice any gross abduction or any instability in that hip as she goes into that pattern? And then finally, we want to take a look at the, the torso and see how that mirrors her shin angle. So for all intents and purposes, whenever we're doing a squat, split squat, step up, lunge, what have you, we generally want to see a paralleled angle between the torso and the shin angle. And this is just going to help with that total body continuity and keeping everything in a good mechanical relationship.